A ball rolls horizontally off the edge of the table at 10 minutes per second. It takes 0.5 seconds for the ball to hit the ground. Calculate the height of the table and the horizontal range of the ball's motion. Assume a resistance is negligible. So in this scenario, we should start by drawing a diagram to represent what happens to the ball's motion. So the ball travels horizontally and flies off the edge of the table at 10 meters per second. This is the initial velocity and also the initial horizontal velocity of the ball. And of course, the motion of the ball can be traced out by something like this. And that's called the height of the table, h, and the horizontal range or distance, d. So we know that the initial horizontal velocity is 10 meters per second. And we know the initial vertical velocity is zero. This is always the case when any object or mass travels horizontally at the beginning of its projectile motion. We can start by using the time of flight and the initial vertical velocity to find the vertical displacement of the entire motion. We can do this by using sy equals to suy times by t plus half ay t squared. Now sy here is my h, this is the vertical displacement at the very bottom, which is the ground, so this will allow us to measure the height of the table. Initial vertical velocity is 0, and time is 0 0.5, plus half. ay is the vertical acceleration, and in these questions we usually assume it's negative 9.8, so this is a gravitational acceleration, times by 0 0.5 squared. Since the first term is 0, the height is going to be minus 4.9 times by 0 0.5 squared. This gives me minus 1.225 meters. So the vertical displacement here is minus 1.225 meters, which makes sense because the ball ends up below the initial starting point of the motion. But if we want to find height, the height here, of course, will be 1.225 meters. The horizontal range can be calculated by using the formula ux, which is the initial horizontal velocity, times the time of flight. And we know the horizontal velocity is 10 meters per second, and we'll times it by 0 0.5, and we'll get 5 meters. So this distance here will be 5 meters. Keep in mind that when you're calculating the horizontal range or the horizontal distance, we don't need to consider any acceleration or deceleration if we're assuming a resistance is negligible. A person standing on the edge of a 200 meter tall cliff throws a stone at 10 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. Calculate the time taken for the stone to reach the bottom of the cliff and the horizontal distance traveled by the stone. So again, always good idea to draw a simple diagram to visualize the scenario. So we have a person and the person throws a stone at a velocity of 10 minutes per second, but this time it is at an angle of 30 degrees to horizontal. And this stone, of course, will travel until it reaches maximum height, and it will then return back down to the bottom of the cliff. So we're given that the cliff is 200 meters tall, and we also want to find the horizontal distance. Let's call this D. We can start by finding our initial horizontal and vertical velocities. And we can do this by constructing a vector diagram. This is your horizontal velocity, and this is your initial vertical velocity. The angle here will be 30 degrees. So we know that horizontal velocity divided by 10, this is cosine 30 degrees. So ux is equal to 10 cosine 30 degrees. Similarly, uy divided by 10 is equal to sine 30 degrees. So we have uy is equal to 10 times by sine 30 degrees. We can then use sy equals to uy t plus half a y t squared to find the time of flight. We know the displacement is 200 meters, or rather minus 200 meters, because the bore, or so the stone, will end up 200 meters below the starting point. SY here, as we calculated, was 10 sine 30 degrees, and time is what we're trying to find. And the acceleration here is, again, our gravitational acceleration, negative 9.8 times by T squared. Now we can rearrange this equation to form a quadratic equation. So we get 4.9 T squared minus 10 sine 30 degrees minus 200 equals 0, 
So here, 4.9 is my A, minus 10 sine 30 degrees is my B, and minus 200 is my C. I can use this quadratic equation and the quadratic formula to solve for T. So T is equal to minus B plus minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So minus B is going to be minus minus 10 sine 30 degrees plus minus square root. Now B squared here is going to be minus 10 sine 30 or bracket squared uh, minus 4. A here is 4.9 and c here is minus 200 and we'll divide this by 2 times by 4.9 which is a and this gives me 6.9 seconds as the positive answer so when it comes to using a quadratic equation to find time of flight we always opt for the positive answer so once we found the time of flight we can then find the horizontal distance pretty easily because we know that the horizontal distance is equal to the initial horizontal velocity times by the time of flight which is 6.9 seconds and the horizontal velocity we found earlier this was 10 cosine 30 degrees times by 6.9 and this gives me a horizontal distance of approximately 60 meters for the same scenario calculate the maximum height from the ground reached by the stone. So as we said earlier, when an object is launched at an angle that is 30 degrees to a horizontal, it will reach a maximum height before it will come back down and complete its projectile motion. At this given point, at the maximum height, it's very important to remember that the vertical velocity, let's call this Vy, is equal to zero. And we can use the equation Vy squared equals to Uy squared plus 2ay sy to calculate the vertical displacement which is the height reached by the ball above its initial starting point that's called as sy here so vy squared we know is zero at the maximum height uy is 10 sine 30 degrees this is my initial vertical velocity so squared plus 2 ay is again gravitational acceleration so 9 minus 9.8 meters per second squared and we'll times this by sy. And if we rearrange the equation to make sy the subject, we'll get sy equals to the initial vertical velocity squared divided by 2 times by 9.8. We can solve for sy equals to 1.28 meters. Now we know this 1.28 meters only corresponds to the maximum vertical displacement traveled by the stone. If we want to calculate the maximum height, we also need to include the height of the cliff which is 200 meters. So the maximum height here is actually the combination of both. So it's 200 plus 1.28, and we'll get a maximum height of 201.28 meters.